Mr. Speaker, it's nice to see you in the chair, and it's great to see MPs in their seats. Here, here. For more than a week, Canadians have been watching devastating images out of British Columbia as floods ravage Abbotsford, Hope, and dozens of communities. I want to recognize that the Minister has been in regular contact with the federal government's response to these tragic floods. So could the Prime Minister please update this House on the latest federal government efforts to deal with this disaster? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. I thank the member opposite for uh, bringing this up. I know that he and I and all members of this House, indeed all Canadians, stand with British Columbians during this extraordinarily difficult time. We are, as he said, in close contact with provincial authorities to make sure we are prepared for any further aid required. Federal resources have been on the ground since the very beginning and now have up to 500 CAF members on their ground, sandbagging, rescuing livestock, providing food and support to remote communities. We will continue to be there to support people in BC as we get through this and as we rebuild. It's what Canadians do. We stick up for each other. We're there for each other. We will continue. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. I'd like to thank the Prime Minister and keep on the theme of standing up for people in British Columbia. The Coastal Gas Link Project has agreements with 20 Indigenous communities in BC. True reconciliation demands a plan for economic reconciliation so that the next generation of Indigenous children inherit opportunity and not trauma, Mr. Speaker. This week, we've seen dog whistle invitations to blow up projects like Coastal Gas Link. So why are Canadians waiting on this Prime Minister to release a real plan for economic reconciliation? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, from 2015 onwards, we have been serious about the work of reconciliation, which absolutely does uh, include economic reconciliation in leadership, in partnership with Indigenous peoples, whether it's on developing natural resources, whether it's on ensuring parity in uh, investments in schools or ending uh, long-term boil water advisors, uh, advisories, we will continue to move forward in a way that is led by and guided by the partnerships with Indigenous peoples across this country. Of course, Canadians need to work together to achieve this goal, and any remarks that advocate for or serve to instigate violence are unproductive and potentially dangerous. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, Canadian inflation is at a 20-year high. 60% of Canadian parents are worried about putting food on the table. Monthly grocery bills have already gone up hundreds of dollars. The speech from the throne mentioned inflation once. Shameful. Just Shameful. once, Mr. Speaker. So is the Prime Minister having trouble understanding the concerns of Canadian families, or does he just not care? Yes. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, inflation is a challenge that countries around the world are facing right now because of disrupted supply chains, because of uh, the, research, uh, the uh, recovery of our economies after COVID. But we are extremely concerned about the rising costs of living brought to people by inflation. The member opposite talked about families. That's exactly why we're moving forward with $10 a day childcare right across the country. And indeed, even in places like Alberta, they're moving forward on that and indeed have have shown that they will cut in half childcare costs uh, for families as of January 1st. That's real help that the Conservatives here in this House have stood against. Before I go to the Leader of the Opposition, I, I, I'm sure everybody wants to hear the responses to the questions. I just want to point that out and make sure that everybody stays quiet and listens. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Monsieur le Président, l'inflation au Canada Inflation in Canada is at its highest level. 60% of Canadian families fear they won't be able to feed their families. The grocery bills have already gone up by hundreds of dollars. But the throne speech merely mentioned inflation once, just once. Does the Prime Minister realize that we have an inflation crisis in Canada? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. I find it interesting 
that, yes, we're talking about inflation as a challenge that many countries in the world are dealing with, but we spent a lot more time in the throne speech talking about solutions, solutions like $10 a day daycare, childcare all across the country, and investing in the housing crisis, investments and initiatives that the Conservatives federally oppose. They're tearing up agreements that would help families with child care, but we're going to move forward to help families precisely with the cost of living. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Solutions for the economy, Mr. Speaker? The labour shortage is real, but the Liberals are ignoring it. Quebec has... We're hiring signs all over the place, but the Prime Minister has no plan to deal with this, the situation, no solutions. And as proof, inflation was not even mentioned, uh, as, or the labor shortage was not even mentioned once in the throne speech. How does the Prime Minister explain that he doesn't acknowledge the labor shortage in Canada? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Mr. Speaker, the throne speech focused on the major issues Canadians are facing, including the labour shortage, because we know that getting over COVID and getting through the pandemic and uh, building back the economic recovery, the creation of new innovative jobs in green sectors and reconciliation, those are the major priorities Canadians want us to work on. And that's precisely what we're going to do. Yes, we will raise immigration levels. Yes, we will invest in training. Yes, we will help reduce or diminish the labour shortage, which existed before the pandemic and is still around. The Honourable Member for Belleuil-Chambly. 